Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Kevin Rocco, and I'm the founder and CEO of BioRes, where we are developing the future of tendon and ligament healing. The status of sports medicine industry today is that good repairs do not guarantee good outcomes. There's no challenges in completing an ACL reconstruction or a rotator cuff. Uh, there is a problem with the biologic healing thereafter. So for a surgeon, this means they can complete the repair and they don't know the fate of that patient. The biology may not kick in. And tendon and ligament tissue is relatively avascular, meaning it suffers from poor healing, long recoveries, and high retear rates. You can see in the United States market alone, about a million procedures uh, with rupture rates uh, as high as 50%. And so surgeons, understandably, have been looking for materials that can improve the healing process. And this is a category called augmentation, where they're actually adding materials at the time of surgery. The market leaders, Arthrex and Smith and & Nephew, each have respective technologies in this, driving um, an increase of $180 million over the last five years. Arthrex's technology, the internal brace, is a mechanical reinforcement. It can be added to a standard of care. You're seeing there on the left the ACL with a piece of internal brace as a mechanical backstop. On the right, there was a company called Rotation Medical acquired in 2017 by Smith & Nephew for $210 million, and that was a regenerative technology that, that could grow new tissue in a rotator cuff. Uh, the problem is, is it had no strength. So the bottom line here in the market today is that there is no implant material that can both increase the repair strength at time zero and facilitate an improved healing process. And so for the last four years, BioRes has been developing a breakthrough scaffold technology called BioBrace. And BioBrace is intended to reinforce tendon and ligament repairs and improve the healing process. And what's special about the BioBrace is if you cut it in the cross section, you see it's a biocomposite of two materials. It's got a highly porous collagen sponge. Um, you can see there all that kind of dark space. That's so cells can grow right into it. It's a biologic matrix that cells can use to regenerate new tissue, similar to Rotation Medical. But we've embedded it with bioresorbable microfilaments, about 15 micron in diameter. And that gives the implant strength and durability. And the history of materials in medicine really fall into two camps, either synthetic materials or biologic materials. You can see synthetic materials are often added suture, suture tapes, um, two-dimensional scaffolds, that would be like a hernia mesh. Those things have strength, but they do very little to improve that healing process. Biologic materials like tissue, tissue grafts, allograft tissues, tissues harvested from animals, or even things like orthobiologic, stem cells, PRP, BMAC, these have a capacity to improve healing, but they don't improve the mechanical durability. And so um, you probably see where this is going, but where, by having these two materials, in our biocomposite architecture, we'll, we're able to occupy this top right quadrant of both strong and regenerative. Uh, fortunately, the patent office agrees with us. We have this highly differentiated technology. Um, I would call this category-defining innovation. We have 20 patents uh, granted today with 10 more pending. And even just last week, uh, we, we received an additional notice of allowance around our biocomposite architecture. And what's, what the BioBrace does here is at time zero, it's a devoid scaffold, open, there's no cells in it. It can be added into a tendon or ligament repair or reconstruction. I'm showing you here it's implanted into a ovine, a sheep patellar tendon defect. You can suture that material right in place. And after just three short weeks, it's full of new cells, new biology. Um, that means it's both mechanically load sharing and facilitating new tissue regeneration. And on the far right, I'm showing a graph that um, it provides strength for a period of about two years before it breaks down naturally. So in short, the BioBrace mechanically stabilizes, regenerates into tissue, and then it resorbs away. This has a great uh, value proposition for all the stakeholders um, involved here for the patient. This is an opportunity for faster recovery and reducing re-injury. For the surgeon in the operating room uh, completing the procedure, this is something that can be off the shelf readily available to add that reinforcement and add confidence that this patient is going to heal. For the provider, uh, this is easier and less uh, costly than tissues or processed tissues. And for the payers, this is an opportunity to reduce healthcare costs. 
BioBrace is off the shelf in two sizes. We've developed this in two configurations, one primarily focused on uh, rotator cuff and Achilles tendon, 23 millimeters by 30, and then the other is a long strip that can readily be added to things like an ACL reconstruction or extra articular ligaments. We have healthy ASP um, with attractive margins. And so what this looks like in a rotator cuff, uh, you can see you can add the bio brace to the existing repair. This ties into the existing um, fixation hardware so there's no uh, additional uh, instrumentations or special techniques needed. And this is, this is easily done with existing arthroscopic techniques. You can see the cadaver image here. But we can also do this with ACL reconstruction. So you can see this is a platform technology. It can be done with, with the existing arthroscopic techniques showing different varieties of ACL reconstruction. And so all in, this is about a million procedures per year in the United States, uh, predominantly ACL and rotator cuff, but a host of other things too. We're focused on going to market around um, some specific patient indications that have the largest unmet clinical needs, things like large rotator cuff tears or um, young active patients with small autographs or even revision cases. And for the first time publicly, we're sharing that the BioBrace is FDA cleared as of about two weeks ago. So we're very excited about that, uh, and the next chapter for BioRes begins. And in that next chapter, we have great world-class key opinion leaders partnered with us uh, for a limited launch. So we have surgeons at each of these institutions lined up to do uh, the first cases in a variety of procedures, both knee and shoulder. And lastly, we've built a strong management team with experience of both large and small companies. Um, and I'd just like to highlight David Hook in particular, who joined the company last week. We put out a press release. Um, he's joined us to lead our sales effort, and he was instrumental leading the market adoption and clinical education of Rotation Medical uh, before um, Smith & Nephew acquired it in 2017. On the advisory side, world-class surgeons and scientists, Bob Arciero at UConn, former AOSSM president, Stephen Arnosky, uh, veterinary pathologist who helped lead the science and the validation of rotation medical. So there's a nice tailwind with the ro rotation medical story, and the science is now established in the market. The board of directors is myself, uh, Dick Emmett, the vertical group, New York Angels, and Connecticut Innovation. So we have a strong investor group. And we've also added two independents, Nick Pachuda, formerly Johnson & Johnson, and Paul Hermes, formerly Medtronic. And, and Nick's actually here at this conference. So the deal summary, in conclusion, there's a large market opportunity, a large unmet clinical need. BioRes is category-defining innovation, strong intellectual property, an experienced team. We've been capital efficient over the last four years, uh, $7 million in to date, and we are socializing our Series A. So please come find me. I'll be hanging out over here until about 10 a.m., and I look forward to speaking with you. Thank you.